Good. All right, so uh, come on back. Uh, back to the uh, that old mansion uh, once again. And uh, it's been about uh, probably been about a week uh, since uh, our last video. And uh, I just wanted to uh, give you a quick uh, rundown on, uh, on where we're at today. And uh, you can see that uh, we have this kitchen now on uh, drywall. And, uh, and we're going to be taping this up uh, later on uh, this afternoon. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, the dinette uh, this morning. And, uh, and I'm going to kind of give you a rundown. Because that's, um, you know, that's a tricky area. And, uh, and I think uh, you'll get some value out of seeing what's happening there. Uh, but, uh, but you know, uh, the drywall's done. We're not ready for taping yet. We still have uh, lots of prep to do uh, with this board. Uh, we don't want, uh, you know, we don't want any, uh, any flaky butt joints, you know. Uh, anyways, uh, we'll, let's go on into the dinette and we'll, uh, we'll talk about this drywall after. So we got our, uh, our little base set up in here. And uh, uh, so Robert was just in here uh, still uh, prepping these walls. And so let's just look at this, uh, this one section right here. Uh, we have three walls that we're keeping. One, two, three. Uh, that's that's going to stay the original plaster and we're going to uh, uh, skim coat all this. Uh, but then we also have drywall. And so we're using a combination of drywall and plastering techniques uh, in this uh, breakfast nook. Um, we built everything very specific. Uh, specific heights. Uh, we got cabinet work going in here. We have a, a bench that's uh, going to go back in there. That way, they, after these windows uh, get restored, and all the windows are going to be restored, uh, they'll have someplace nice to sit. Um, and uh, and so, when I look at this wall, this plaster is, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's not bad. You know, we we do have some cracks and that sort of thing. So we you know chase some cracks. We're not worried all that much about cracks. We're not making this perfect. That's not the objective of this particular uh, area. Uh, there was tile here. The tile was glued on. So uh, so we scraped down just that the, all the high parts of, uh, of that adhesive. We're not scraping it right off. Somebody else had already started doing that, but the, the more they scraped, the more they're damaging the, the plaster because it's, it's on there. And, uh, and then I'd like to submit that if it's on there that strong, it doesn't need to come off. And uh, so we're not taking this off. What we're going to do is we're going to, uh, you know, we're, we're going to tape this in uh, as if, um, uh, don't, don't confuse me on this. We're using some drywall techniques to tape this drywall into the plaster, but we're using plaster techniques to get everything to stick. And, um, and we need to use uh, bonding adhesive, uh, we're not using uh, drywall compound. Drywall compound is a mistake. It's, uh, it'll flake off. Uh, we're going to use uh, some Duravon 90 uh, typesetting compound. And uh, I guess that's uh, the difference uh, between drywall compound and say a typesetting compound is basically a low dense material to a high dense material. And high dense material that's a little more cementitious than, than drywall compound. Drywall compound I think of as uh, just more cosmetic. But uh, we're doing some structural stuff here. We, we don't want things to fail. Uh, not next year, not five years, not, not 50 years from now. We want it to be as permanent as we possibly can make it. So that's, uh, that's where we're at right now. And, uh, and we're just gonna start, start uh, continue to prep. We've got some cleaning to do. And, uh, and then we'll take you through the process. So uh, I'm looking at uh, this wall here and we have the I, I know it sounds weird that uh, our objective really isn't to fix these cracks. Um, uh, that's uh, just the part of the um, uh, characteristic that uh, the homeowners are wanting us to leave. Uh, but we are going to chase these uh, large primary cracks. And what I mean by chasing a crack is I'm going to make this, this crack larger than what it is. And, uh, and you can you can get uh, uh, special bits that would go on to the end of your uh, your drill, or I'm uh, sorry, a, 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 a drum that's uh, I'm losing my, my thoughts here. But anyways, we're, we're gonna cut this out. Uh,
and my knife is on an angle. So I'm basically cutting a V. Small size. The bigger the groove, the better. In fact, if we can get right down to the wood lath, and I can see the I can see the wood lath from here. Because this crack, if you see a crack here, it's not cracked just on the surface. It's cracked right on down to the wood lath or the plasterboard or whatever's whatever it's behind. I think you get the drift. Uh, we'll come back uh, in a few minutes and we'll get the rest of these uh, cracks chased and we'll pick it up from there. holes where the uh, device boxes uh, used to be that don't exist anymore uh, so Robert's gonna put in uh, just a little bit of wood lath in behind there put a couple of screws in and all that's uh, uh, going to do is give me something to work off of so uh, we'll uh, we'll show you how we do that in a couple of seconds from now all right so a couple of things uh, just while we're waiting for Robert to get those holes filled I thought I'd give you a quick little rundown on some of the tools and material that we're gonna be using today and uh, our, primary, uh, our primary material is going to be uh, Durabond uh, 90 typesetting compound. And, um, you know, Durabond 90 typesetting compound is a very, very hard, excellent product for bonding things together. But, uh, uh, but not without using some uh, polyvinyl acetate. So this is, uh, this is PVA. And we're going to be applying that uh, to all the surfaces that we're working off of uh, before we, we apply anything. And basically, uh, polyvinyl acetate is glue, and we're going to be gluing that in. And you can see how how thin how thin that is. That's like that's like water almost. And so, if you were going to parge the outside of your house, uh, the cement, you would be using this very same polyvinyl acetate to glue those cements together. And uh, we're working in a cement house, so we're going to be gluing the cements together. Uh, some of the other uh, other materials. Uh, this is uh, this is drywall compound. Uh, the drywall compound, and uh, and we're not going to be using any of this in the in the breakfast nook. Uh, we're going to be using this in the kitchen. And the reason why we're using the all-purpose uh, green CGC drywall compound is because it has uh, more. Uh, adhering characteristics to it than uh, say, uh, say the general or the uh, the ultralight or something like that. It just shrinks more, sucks more, and, uh, and I guess I shouldn't say it sucks more, but uh, uh, but it uh, grabs better. And uh, so we have a pail of that. We've already mixed it up. 
Um, we're going to be using a, a china brush to keep things wet. We have uh, crown trowels. So here, here's a pretty, uh, pretty old, pretty crummy crown trowel. Uh, this one's uh, Marshalltown, uh, and you can see what a crown trowel is, and it basically, uh, so they call it a crown trowel or a curved trowel or a drywall trowel, and that is uh, to apply more compound than a flat trowel. Uh, we're not using this trowel in, into the breakfast nook at all, but, uh, but we are going to be using it in, uh, in the kitchen. Um, another tool, uh, I'm going to be using uh, this 16-inch uh, uh, Nella pool trowel. I'm sorry, that's 14 inch. This one's, uh, sorry, that's uh, maybe 16. This one's 18 inch uh, curry trowel. And, uh, and this is probably my favorite uh, go-to trowel for, uh, for all, my, uh, all my finish work. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it to apply the, uh, the skin coat of uh, uh, Durban today. Uh, we're gonna also, also gonna be using uh, a corner tool. Six inch taping knife. Four inch taping knife. Three inch taping knife and uh, all kinds of other here's our scrapers for getting junk off the wall and all kinds of other things you know we got scratchers and uh, dash brushes uh, for doing some textures we have a wood float some sponges uh, different types of uh, sponge floats and uh, this one's uh, most of that is uh, just for textures but uh, but this is uh, this is going to be the primary stuff uh, for this morning and uh, trigger sprayer we might want to apply a little bit of water and, uh, and then of course, uh, this is my, uh, that's my 16 inch uh, Nella Hawk, uh, a 13 inch, uh, well I don't know, maybe I think that's uh, craft, craft tools. And uh, all right, I think we're ready to uh, get back into breakfast now. And the mixer I prefer to use is this uh, sheetrock uh, mixing tool. And I use a DeWalt uh, mixing drill. Let's cut this open a little bit here. This is a Durban 90. Let's put a little water in the bottle. So I have fresh water, my my mixing bucket, and my cleaning bucket. So I'm not using dirty water. Use uh, dirty water, and uh, it'll act as an accelerator and speed up the setting of the compound. Because right now it's chemically set for 90 minutes. So next step is our uh, polyvinyl acetate and uh, parging adhesive, cement bonding adhesive. I use a brush and a, and a four inch roller and, and I don't know if you can see me doing that crack, but you know, time and time again, I see this done with drywall compound and it'll fail. And I don't even promise doing it this way is not going to fail, but this is the best that we're going to do. And I've vacuumed this crack as well to try and get out as much dusty debris as possible. And even that little crack, I'm going to get right in there. basically gonna get that adhesive on using just a four inch roller if it was a bigger area I might use a, a nine inch roller and we're going right over top of oil paint line gypsum Tile glue. And this is probably the most critical area. It's where the gypsum meets the wood lath. Get that right in there. Uh, 
I'm not too concerned about the drywall because the Durabon will stick perfectly to the to the drywall. All up in here. Right on top of that wood lath. So I'm just basically uh, putzing a little bit here, waiting for this other wall to sit up. I don't want to work on it too soon. I want to make sure that this is all tacky before you dig into it. And I'm not afraid of big holes like that. We'll be all right. All right. Oh, that's a little nicer. So this is probably one of the only times you're going to see me use this type of fiberglass. If you were to use this type of fiberglass in uh, drywall work, it's, it's going to crack. Always does. And, uh, and people uh, really have a misunderstanding about this particular type of fiberglass. But uh, we're going to use it today because we're using Durabon 90 with it, which uh, now won't crack. So I'm going to tape in my, my tape joints first. And then we're going to skip this wall.
that. I know I got some lines in there, but I probably want to take those out. I wait until it hurts up a little bit. And I just really want to make sure all those grooves are full. Put a couple of corner beads on, and uh, I'm using uh, paper corner beads, they're paper and, uh, and metal, and I'm going to put them on with uh, Durban 90. You know, I really should have taped, uh, taped these first. And so I'm going to go back and I'm going to take these first and then I'm going to put that beat on. your uh, joints before you put a bead on. Sure, I got a little bit of a fill on each side of that bead. I could probably come over a little bit more. shaped up a little bit here and I was uh, working off of that three step. I should have been working off of a bench. I was dropping everything and, and uh, so I have this big big gap here. 
uh, I have PVA in there, I have Duravon 90 in there, and I know it's not going to crack. But I want to just make sure, so I'm going to put this uh, six inch uh, fiber fuse in there. And uh, just to give me a little extra peace of mind. And the nice thing about uh, fiber fuse, it's fiberglass, but different than this fiberglass. This is a little more like a spider web, and you can push that compound right through, and it's a, a superior product than the other fiberglass we're using. The reason why, I feel like the other fiberglass was more appropriate for the inside corners, but for flats and that sort of thing. Not with Durban, it doesn't matter which fiberglass you're using, but um, I should use my trowel for this just to clear you some space. Yeah, that's a lot nicer. I guess we'll uh, have a bit of a refresher here and uh, I'll kind of uh, go over uh, what we've done. Excuse me, before we do that, I need to set my timer. So I've just started a timer for 45 minutes. We're going to uh, put that down and that's how much time I really have to work with, uh, with this uh, diamond veneer fish. And uh, so I'll give you a quick, uh, quick rundown of what happened here. We had these old plaster walls. Uh, had glue, adhesive from old tile work, cracks, missing plaster, and we fixed that and filled it all in. We put a skin coat of, uh, of uh, Durabond 90 type setting compound. Uh, so the advantage to that is uh, it's a high dense product and works really well at repairing, but uh, it's not a great product for uh, diamond to stick to. Uh, so we need to uh, do a chemical bond. We've applied uh, polyvinyl acetate, so PVP. This, this wall is really sticky right now. And, uh, and I'm going to start putting my first coat of, uh, of diamond veneer plaster on. And uh, so the first coat, I'm using, uh, I'm using my, my square trowel, but for my finished coat, I'm going to use uh, my pool trowel. And uh, the reason why I'm using this one is just uh, allows me to get into the corners uh, a little nicer. And the first coat uh, doesn't have to be pretty, uh, it just has to be on and thin. And then the second coat uh, in about 45 minutes is, uh, is going to put it all up. And we've already done two walls. And we haven't uh, water uh, trowel those yet, but, uh, but uh, that's coming up here in a minute. So I always uh, kind of start from the same, same area. Some, some guys start from the top, I start from the bottom. Putting just literally about a sixteenth of an inch of, uh, of material on this wall. PVA came up on the uh, these uh, adjoining walls are, are, are drywall and uh, so I don't want to I don't want to uh, drywall the inside of the corners and then and then apply the, 
the diamond finish. I'm gonna apply the diamond finish and then drywall into that if I need to, if I need to use drywall compound. If that's uh, as clear as mud. It uh, looks ugly right now, but that's as good as it needs to be until we double back on it. And when we go to double back on it, it'll get rid of all that imperfection. And honestly, after I'm done doubling back on it, it'll look, uh, you know, it'll need hardly anything, hardly any water sanding whatsoever. But uh, that's that, so uh, I'm going to go work on another wall. We're going to start uh, doubling back on this wall. set up for another uh, 30 minutes and we'll, uh, we'll water trowel it. One more wall to do.